Hey there, sports history fan. This is Ross Bliley, the host of the Pigskin Tales podcast. Are you looking for that perfect, unique gift for your sports-loving child or grandchild? Or maybe you're looking for one. Well, I got something very unique for you. It's a racket. It's the ultimate device for the ultimate fan. It's perfect for any time you need to make some noise. What it is, is a 7-inch compact megaphone. It's got 8 powerful adjustable LED lights, noisemakers. Plus, you can design it all you want to match your team's colors. So get on out there and let's get loud. Bring a racket to your next game or competition to cheer on your favorite team or athlete. To pick up your racket today, head to MyRacket.com. That's my r a k i t dot com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. The Rose Bowl. The game that inspired the college football bowl season has a long and storied history. The stadium itself is 100 years old, and in celebration of it, Pigskin Dispatch is assembling some of the top historians and authors to share the memories, people, and events that make the granddaddy of them all the special game that it is. Enjoy this Rose Bowl memory from pigskindispatch.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Welcome to the Pig Pen, your portal to positive football history. In this month, December, it is your portal to the Rose Bowl history as we go through each and every Rose Bowl game, talking about some of the greatest players, coaches, and just everything in general about the Rose Bowl. Some great stories coming out of that great venue that turns 100 years old on January 1st, 2023. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the 13th Rose Bowl game played. This is the 1927 Rose Bowl game that was held on January 1st, 1927 in Pasadena, California. The game featured the Alabama Crimson Tide of the Southern Conference versus Stanford of the Pacific Coast Conference. Uh, Each squad was well coached and had unblemished records during their respective 1926 gridiron campaigns. Now first we'll talk a little bit about Stanford. I believe they were not called the Cardinal at that point. They were called the Indians. I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, I am almost positive they were. And the team was coached under the legendary coach Pop Warner. Yeah, the same Pop Warner that coached uh, Jim Thorpe at Carlisle and then went on to Pittsburgh and won some national championships there. Well, he's at Stanford, and he's taking an undefeated team, no surprise, in just his third season at the school to the granddaddy of them all. They were the Pacific Coast champions that year, compiling a 10-0 record during the regular season, and they outscored their opponents by 261-66, to almost 200-point differential in that that dominated the Pacific Coast. Well, on the other sideline was the Crimson Tide that had shocked the football world a year earlier when they knocked off Washington by just one point in that game that stirred the South and Southern football. Their coach, Wallace Wade, a legend in his own right, uh, it was in his fourth year in 1926, and Alabama finished the season with nine wins and zero losses. The closest competition where they had, they had a 2 nothing victory over a very strong Sewanee uh, football team in the middle of October. Well, the air of excitement was built up for this matchup. The United Press International called the 1927 Rose Bowl the, quote, the football championship of America, unquote. The Rose Bowl game was really coming into its own as the hype and the billing led to a crowd of over 57,000 people, which set an attendance record. Now, remember, the stadium is only about five years old at this point in time. The game action was just as good as the pregame hype. Stanford's George Bogue missed an 18-yard field goal attempt in the first quarter, so still scoreless. But Bogue made up for it a bit later, though, when he brought the California faithful to their feet by throwing a touchdown pass to Ed Walker, and then he came on again and kicked the extra point to put Stanford up 7 to nothing. 
Stanford held that lead through most of the rest of the game. That all changed in the final minutes as the Tide stalled a Stanford drive and forced them to punt on fourth down. The exceptional Crimson Tide rush blocked Frankie Wilton's punt and Alabama took over at the Stanford 14-yard line. Alabama running back Jimmy Johnson muscled himself the yardage needed for the touchdown and it all came down to that dreaded extra point attempt and Alabama's Herschel Caldwell came on cool and calm and kicked a, a, a boot that sailed true and nodded the score at 7. The final minute ran off with Stanford in a stalemate that could not move the ball and get that go-ahead score. And the clock went to zeros with the scoreboard calling out a 7-all tie. In 1953, a group of historians awarded Alabama offensive lineman Fred Pickard as the MVP of that 1927 Rose Bowl game. And what a great bit of history that game was. Uh, another tie in Rose Bowl history. We've had, I think that's the third one on record at that point in time. And two evenly matched teams that were undefeated and some great Rose Bowl history. Tune in all month to, for more Rose Bowl history here on pigskindispatch.com at your favorite podcast provider. Till tomorrow, everybody, have a great gridiron day. Peeking up at the clock, the time's running down. We're going to go into victory formation, take a knee, and let this baby run out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back tomorrow for the next podcast. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. A special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, I'm Joe Ziemba, the host of the podcast When Football Was Football, and I'm pleased to announce that I'm partnering with the Sports History Network to give away two copies of my new book, Bears vs. Cardinals, the NFL's Oldest Rivalry, published by McFarlane Books. To enter this contest, simply go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash giveaways. Winners will be announced on December 19th, and we'll make sure that your personalized copy is received before December 25th. And we hope you'll enjoy tales in the book, such as the time a player for the Cardinals actually owned the Chicago Bears, or how members of the Bears faced down Al Capone. You'll meet a fullback who became a spy and learn about the Bears who partied with presidents. Once again, to enter this free giveaway, go to sportshistorynetwork.com giveaways. Thank you.